Marvel Comics are the best, because they give you free digital copies, so you can just sell the print edition later. That's literally the only thing that keeps me buying Marvel Comics. Really? Not literally, but, but not literally the only thing. But, but one of the main things. Pretty high up there. One of the main things. I was going to say top of the charts, but then I thought top of the morning. And then, then I was thinking about leprechauns. I, I don't know, it was a really weird train of thought. I too think about Irish people often. Yeah. Just like you. Wait, what? I don't know. It's Southern California Comics. And what do we call this thing? We call this thing the Sundown Rundown. I'm That's Rob. I'm Danny. And we're going to talk about the latest and greatest, the newest and the bluest. The cream of the crop, the top of the charts. Good top, top of the, the morning, morning to you. you. <laughs> you want to get started or should I? I I like this pose you're doing. I like this. Yeah, so I can fit into a frame. This is nice. It's a good stance. Makes you feel powerful. I'll go first. Sure, why not? Alright. We're gonna talk about what you got. We're gonna talk about we're gonna go old, new, old, new. That's how I'm gonna do it. So first, final issue of Daredevil. Final issue of the Wade Daredevil. After this it's Charles Sewell and Ron Garney? The Garn. Very exciting. This is the, it's the end of an era. Final issue. For real this time. Wade has been on <laughs> Wade has been on Daredevil for a very long time. Once we thought it was gonna end and then it didn't, it kept going. Mm-hmm. And uh, but now this is it. This is the finale. This is uh it just it, it's a lot of fun. Just back and forth, back and forth. Um no, it's exciting. What dynamic. You don't wanna miss it. I mean everyone everyone should partake in the end of an era. Foggy doesn't have hair anymore. Why isn't Foggy there? I think he's got the cankers. Does he? Yeah. I'm, Spoilers. I'm, I'm admittedly a little behind. Really behind, because that's like a few years off. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I, I've been collecting the Wade collection of uh, Daredevil and not reading them. I just want to read them all at once. Smart. Yeah. You know what else is smart? The Omega Men by Grayson's very own Tim King. This issue is illustrated by Toby Cypress, who I assume is a British person. I don't know why. Toby. But Pretty British name. It's what I shout whenever I try and shoot a basketball. It's Obi. <laughs> so, yes, Omega Men, one of the more interesting comics DC puts out, I think. Basically, what if the Guardians of the Galaxy were terrorists? It's amazing. That's the pitch I keep telling people, and I think everyone seems to enjoy that, so you should come check it out. The art's pretty great in this issue. Normally, when there's a... Ooh, yeah, yeah. Right? I do like that. Even I am taken with this, and I hate everything. Yeah, check it out. Especially really comics. Nice. Yeah, I cannot stand comics, but this one looks good. Normally, a uh, filling issue kind of sucks, you know? Right. The change in art isn't always great, but this one looks good. I'm stoked. One of the best books DC puts out. Boom. Uh, hey, good transition. Is it? Because it's from Boom Studios. Why is that a good transition? Because you just said Boom. Did I say Boom? This comic is from Boom Studios. Thanks for putting that together. Didn't even know. He got his own segue. <laughs> He's so good, he doesn't even know it. I'm doing segues in my sleep. What can I say? We've got from Boom was Slash. once Archaea. Slash Archaea. That's right. It's like two imprints. It's kind of like, what is it? Uh, First and Devil Do. They just became one as well. Yeah, just sort Infinitely of less exciting. But we've got Toil and Trouble by, ooh, I'm going to have fun saying these names. Uh, Rare Greed Scott. And Kelly and Nicole Matthews. That that first name, Marigree, is uh, just, just a phenomenal name. It's, it's lovely. That's, but that's probably an Irish person. Oh yeah. Top of the morning to her. See, we everything we do, we keep it thematic. Um, I know little to nothing about this series except for the fact that it apparently takes place in olden times, fantasy land, witches and junk. Really crisp, nice art. You can count on Arcaia for really nice art. Right? They, I, they're always bringing it with like very stylized, hip things. And I love me some witches and some girls with horns. So, oh, branches, yeah, there's. Man, were you a fan of Sweet Tooth then? I did like Sweet Tooth. See? Which will be another great segue later. Um, Casanova number four is out. This is one of my favorite comic books of all time, and it keeps coming out, so I'm happy. <laughs> this is the last issue of Volume 1, so they're kind of switching up the format for this one, because normally they do the whole story, come out in a one-volume trade, but I guess Casanova Assetia Volume 4 is lasting longer. I don't know, hmm. but come check it out. Matt Fraction, 
Fabio Moon, Gabriel Ba, Michael Chabon. What? What? It's crazy. Remember that really great segue about Jeff Lemire that we talked about earlier, because it's going to come back at some point. But in the meantime, I promised you old new, old new, so we're going with another series that's been ongoing. Mark Millar's Jupiter Circle, Wilfredo Torres on the art. Uh, Numero Seis. Numero Seis. Big thing here is obviously you should be reading it if you enjoyed Jupiter's Legacy at all. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be holding your uh, appetites until I believe a couple months from now. Jupiter's Legacy is back. Jupiter Legacy yes. Volume 2, or is it is Jupiter's Legacy Volume 2? Not Circle Volume 2. Correct. It might be called something else like Jupiter's, like. Again. Jupiter's house. Jupiter Jupiter, Jupiter ascending, I don't know. Whose house? Jupiter's house. Not as catchy, but there yeah. are worse things. Like from Grayson. No, from Russia with Grayson. To Grayson. Yeah. From, from Justin the Kelly. So bad. Either way, uh, you should definitely be reading it. It'll be fun to have the, the whole arc, you know. And then this is giving you more backstory for what you're going to be reading in Legacy Volume 2, which mm -hmm. may have a different name. So is this the final issue of the story? I don't believe so. Because I thought number four was the final issue. Uh, this just says end of issue nine. If I can ever get to it. All right. End of book one. I lied to you. Okay, so it's, it's end a, of book one. It's the final. It's the final issue. Of this this run, volume. This run, yeah, this yeah. volume. That makes sense. Also, some dope Frank Quietly covers. Yep. Can't go wrong with Can't Frank. Can't go wrong. Speaking of people from the UK. Oh yeah. A new series of Miracle Man is out. UK, you don't say. That's right. More Marvel Miracle Man. This is the. This starts the run by Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham. Little known fact that Neil Gaiman wrote Miracle Man after Alan Moore was done with it. So there's a whole bunch of these to get through, especially a few never before released issues. Very exciting. Very, Very exciting. exciting. But this is the first one. Come pick it up. It will be worth your time because it's an old British comic. Take her off with old Neil Gaiman. Correct. All right. Rewind this video. Remember, we had spoken about something in the past, and now it's the present, and we're here. Jeff Lemire's Plutono with Emmy Lennox and Jordi Belair, who is hands down my favorite colorist of all time. Particularly because she's like the only colorist who's the eye remember. Because she does everything. It's phenomenal. She's the she best one. Such good colors. Like, it's gotten to the point where I'm just like, Jordi Belair's like, cool. I don't pay attention to any other names. <clears throat> Either way. This is a story by Jeff Lemire. If you're familiar with Jeff Lemire, you've probably read things like Trillium or Sweet Tooth or Essex County. Uh, he's going to be on the upcoming Extraordinary X-Men, and he is known for doing things that are very poignant and heartfelt, but also sad. It looks like this book is going to continue that trend. We've got a bunch of kids, sad homes, but really, just look at this art. How fun is that? Art sure, is so good. You know, you can tell from this panel over here, very sad. Someone with a rough upbringing. Not an you know, entirely novel concept, but you can always trust Jeff Lemire to bring it and bring it hard. Speaking of, here's a new comic that brings it hard. Eight House, number three. First two issues were by Brandon Graham and Marion Churchland. Awesome. Um, it's sort of a fantasy world. A bunch of people do different stories in it for Dirk. a series. This, this one is by... Herjo G. Penalta, who is a, I believe, Spanish artist, who's amazing. Like, I've been following his art for a really long time, and I'm glad he's finally got an image book out, because check it. Now you all can look at this amazing stuff. And it takes place in the same world as... Arclight. Yeah, as Arclight, I believe, even though this is more incredibly sci-fi tinged. Is it the same world or the same universe? Because I know they're all kin to the same, like, space area? But I yeah. wasn't sure if it was all the same planet. That might be it. I was using world in the broadest sense. I know. Like I, as soon as I started, I was like, reality. oh. But yeah, this is a great looking comic. You should pick it up. For you fans of other Brandon Graham stuff, like Prophet, King City, Multiple Warheads, all great. It's Prophet. <laughs> Prophet is amazing. You should, should go with this. Yeah. All right. We, we done? Yeah. Oh, wow. Up. Time for the next thing. Yeah, the next thing. Which we totally have planned. And are ready to show you. That's right. So, so yeah. Hey you. How's it going? So last week, you may remember that Danny and I 
We told you about the new board game section. We just opened up in Southern California Comics. But we only showed you one board game, I believe. And that was just to tease you, tantalize you, get you ready for this. Our new board game section featuring such popular titles as Seven Wonders. Dominion. Catan, people play that. They never stop playing it. There are like eight editions of this game. Smash Up, which is just cool, so I'm pointing to it, or else you get to fight dinosaurs against pirates. I mean, come on. And then, for those of you comic book fans, something very topical. We've got the Legendary series. Legendary deck building game. So much fun. Get to play as your favorite heroes. You will lose a lot, but you'll have a lot of fun doing it. Believe it or not, though, there are more than just these board games here. No, 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 if you follow me, I'm gonna get really close to the camera real quick and then really far away. Staring in my eyes, beautiful. I love it. All right, let's do this. Yeah, let's go. We have even more up front. Some more of the classics, Munchkin, Ticket to Ride, which is like one of the oldest games ever. <laughs> I feel like literally every person has played it once in their life. It's very exciting. But that's not all of the exciting news. We also have a guest coming to the store this weekend, correct? Saturday. This Saturday. And who is that, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> it is Chad Kavanaugh. Chad Kavanaugh, who is here to debut the release of an issue of his comic. The map number seven? The map number seven. Map number seven. And Trouble in Bedlam number two. And Trouble in Bedlam number two. And it, wow, it's first trade, really? That's actually really exciting. I didn't know that as well. So many exciting things coming down. So you should come by on Saturday. These lovely people will be here. You'll be here. We say hi to Sam. She's lovely. Hi, Sam. Hi. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, any final words, Dan? Cool. <laughs> Later.